G'day folks, welcome to Big V TV. Last show of the season. This is it. We're not back next week. This is it. Edge has got the guns out for the last show. Sure We've do. Got the guns out, ready to go. Uh, how did you pull up, young man? Because your team got smashed, beaten, thumped, bang. Are you right. gone? Six points, massive. It's just massive. Well, only two players played for McKinnon. No one else played. <laughs> it was all Timo and bloody Axel Foley. Yeah, they did man, job. they stole the show. Yeah, no, they did real great job. They did a great job today, but it wasn't enough. They need some helpers, man. They do, they do. Blackburn, very good unit, very good unit. But we'll be back, we'll be all right. Well, we'll talk more about that game a little bit later on. There's plenty of big news, uh, none bigger. Game of the season. That's a big call. Oh, you're stop there, That's mate. a big call. Game's a big call. I wouldn't stop there, though. I'll keep going. Well, you reckon it's the best game ever in Big V history? You've only been around for a couple of years, mate. Certainly game of the season. We're talking, of course, state champ men. Game one, right here on this court behind us. It was a corker. Both it was a tennis. ripper. Huge crowd. We were there. Yeah. Someone buggered off before the start of the game. Hello. What were you doing? It's not a girls' yeah. game. What you do instead? Oh. What you go home and do? Some gardening. Oh, nothing. Oh, nothing cool. whatsoever. Sat on the couch and did sweet FA. Did nothing at all. <laughs> that was a great game. <laughs> Waverly got up over uh, Eltham in double overtime. It was, It had everything. I oh, know. It was just blow for blow yep. action. You couldn't have asked for anything more. More twist than that. Yep. Well, I don't know. Bathurst, maybe? There you go. There you go. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, pretty quick. Uh, Mad Mouse at Royal Melbourne Show, something like that. Yeah. Hey, listen. One That's game right. decided by a point in uh, first week of grand finals. Two yeah. games decided by two points. It was a big weekend. How about State Youth Champ women? One point. It was a ripper. But that's what you ask for in a grand final series. You don't want someone to be beating someone by 20 points. You want close games. One game fantastic. in double OT. It Thank was a good game. One game in double OT. One game in OT. Big one down at Warnable overtime. That was a ripper as well. Oh, yeah. It's all happening. It's fantastic. It's a great exhibition right across the league of all these close games coming right down to the wire. It's when the cream rises to the, yep. uh, the top. Rise to the top. Rise to the top. Speaking of Warnable. Nathan Sobey on a plane going to the US will not be here this weekend, we believe. No, yeah, he's gone after this. By, by all reports, it's going to hurt a lot. But I'll tell you what, Warnable with Bobby Cunningham stepping up, yep. we'll get to this. Yeah, but um, they've got certainly some more guns in the uh, in Well, the you don't rate Sobey anyway. Yeah, you, you, you never rate him all season, mate. Hey, massive crowds, all venues, certainly from the games that I went to. Yep. The fans were out in force. Great to see. Big V alive and well, no doubt about that. Uh, live stats, were you guys watching any live stats over the week? Oh, I was trying to watch the, the McKinnon, uh, the McKinnon game. Yeah, but I mean, there was nothing much to watch. Anyway, live stats, one thing that we've got to get up to during the off season, all the clubs out there, whatever it is, whether you've got to get the mice running around the wheel a bit quicker, whatever, it, we've got to get internet connected at all venues because yeah. live stats is just sensational. And unfortunately, a couple of games won't cover on the weekend. Yeah, I know, it's tough for some clubs and they have their different issues and connectivity and stuff that just can't be done, but you we'll know, work we'll, on it. we'll help you. We'll it. work on it. We're there for you. Gonna help We're there. Ads will help me out. We're there. 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 we Women for you, men for you, should both go up to state champ. Oh, careful what finger are you. Should both go up to state champ, men and uh, women. Yes or no? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great to have a country venue back in state champ? Oh, right. But it's a state league that we should be covering more than yep. just the metropolitan area. Yep. I think it's fantastic. I agree. In there. Yep. State champ, men, game one, double overtime, folks. Waverley 113 defeated Eltham 111. Game of the season, Easy. easily, no doubt about it. Daniel Dillon hit four trays in the second quarter alone, and he opened this game game right up. Johnny Lister hit a three on the buzzer to oh, send the just, game into OT. Just there. Like, look, falling away. We love Johnny, but mate, you pulled that one out, didn't you? Oh, look, came out of the crowd. Into the, into the crowd. Yeah, he's drilled in. He's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> it was huge. Uh, sturdy. Uh, big chance on the last play. Uh, well, he, he was certainly moved off. He moved himself off Blennerhassett on the last play. What do you mean? Well, he was with Blennerhassett the whole game, and then for some reason, last play of double OT, or second last play of double OT, he moved off him. Don't know why, but anyway, that's another story. Blennerhassett drains a big three. Bang. The Way captain, got home. captain's triple. Yep. He's been there sometimes because he's a copper now, so he's been there sometimes, not been there, but yep. when it matters, mate. Captain, the skipper. Was Tommy Greer fouled under the basket last second of the game, yes or no? It's a call you probably wouldn't make. That's not what I asked. 
I don't think so. Ooh, wow. okay. Mind you, what was up the other end, it would have been it's a long call. Take 47 people hanging off his guns, mind you. But anyway, so who's going to win from here? Waverley, well, I've got to tell you, Waverley, last year they beat the Hawks. Hawks were red hot favourites. Yeah. Waverley said, up your jumper, stick it, we're coming out to fight, we fight fair, we fight hard. They got up and they won the grand final series. Have we forgotten that the Waverley Falcons are the reigning champs, folks? They're no deals. They're not crap, they're a bloody good team. And right now they're one up, they're one game away, one win away from claiming back to back. I just think we forget, we get caught up in the snowstorm of all these NBL players yep. that are going to Eltham. But at the end of the day, Waverley just showed some absolute good old fashioned grit and determination and got the job done in down G &D. the stretch. Yeah, you G -D. Love, I love the G and D. G and D, now who's gonna win? This is the last show, mate. So you've got to give us your tip right now. Who's going to win? You know what? He has he has just said ads. Everything nice about Waverley. Have a listen to this. Who's going to win state champion? <laughs> now the series goes back to Eltham. <laughs> You watch. And I reckon oh, come on, it'll go to the three games. Yeah, and Elton, who's going to win? Elton ping it back with then Waverley will Ooh. win. You reckon Waverley will get up? Yeah, I do. Okay, who do you think? Um, I think Eltham will. Okay. You wouldn't know, you weren't there, you were gardening. <laughs> no, I wish you saying Eltham will get up this weekend. Leave her alone. State champ women, Eltham 60 defeated Melbourne right. 56 on by Zoe Carr, who by the way, not on camera but off camera, has announced her retirement. I'm sure she announced her retirement off the couch last week. Wow. Did you hear that? <laughs> That's what I heard. Are you alright? Did you take that okay or what? So I don't know about the news. Zoe Carr, 20 and 14 against Melbourne. Uh, Elise Hammond wins 21 points. Great game. Oh. Really, really close. Uh, well done to Elton. Surely they'll go home and win it from here. Uh, this was a really tough game. Contest was all the way through. Actually went down to sort of the last uh, couple of sets of the game. Yep. Um, Melbourne's defense forced Elton into 19 turnovers yep. for the game. Yep. And, um, the hyphen? Yeah, it was actually really, really like quiet. Pretty quiet. She was only uh, kept to seven points for the game, so hopefully she'll step up in game two and she get some big numbers. No, the hyphen doesn't like that. No, she yeah. doesn't like it. You're right. Bonham Pally, I think, put away 12 points in this game as well. She played. Elephant for mine, all done and dusted Saturday night, yes or no? Yeah. No, I still think it'll go to three, and I think Melbourne might actually get up on this. Did you already say that? Yeah, I said that last you week. You think Melbourne will get up? I honestly do. You think Elephant will go home this weekend and lose both games? At yeah, home. I sure do. And this is something you like to live with for the rest of the off Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Is everything alright? Everything's fine. I know it's been a long year. I know you've really struggled sitting beside me all year. Are you okay? Yeah, I really am. What's the bloody plot? D1 men, Warnable, 99 defeated Geelong, 89 in overtime. Cracker of a game. Oh, Up again. Hutchie in the pigskin kicker. Huge games from those two. Warnable, 19 to 9 in OT. The Seahawks hit 7 of 9 shots in the last 5 minutes. Big overtime period. The Green Lantern, 34 and 14. Wooshka. Nathan Sobey, 20 points. Bobby C with 18 and 7. The pigskin kicker, as we said, Jason Reader, 23 and 19. Hutchie, shot, 21. Shot like Marty, the old man, Delaney. 18 and 9. Mm. What a game. I oh, know, but you know, it goes to OT. They clawed it back. I think it was in the third that Warnable clawed it back. But in overtime, when you've got a parochial crowd of something north of a thousand people, yep. a lot of people going nuts. Yep. All right, you're, you're going to get up in overtime. You've got all that people behind you. It's going to be interesting to see how they go without Sobe. It's going to be a big game. Well, can Warnable win away from Whale Bay? Oh, yeah. They yeah, can they get up. Will they wrap it up Saturday night or not? Um, I think they'd have to. If they they have to wrap it up on Saturday night. If it goes to Sunday, Geelong get that momentum at home, they'll probably take it. How important the pig skin kicker for Geelong? How important? Yeah, for us. Yeah. He's, um, he's yeah, 23 and 19. Yeah. I think he shot reasonably poorly and they only lost in overtime. So. You know, there's some room to go for Reed and, and with Hutchie and Delane and, and friends doing those sort of numbers and I think um, they'll, they'll be alright still. I heard a whisper that Nathan Sobey was in tears after this game, yeah. the fact that he's going to miss out this weekend, he's over to the US, great for him, he's heading back to college, yeah. but was just devastated that he's not going to be there this weekend. Yeah, I think they'll miss him too, it's going to be a much, well, just as close a contest, be impossible to pick. Seahawks or Cats? Impossible pick. But no, I'll go Seahawks in two. I'll go Seahawks. Seahawks. Yeah, I think Seahawks will get up as well. D1 women. Speaking of Whale Bay, Warnable, far too strong for Mildura. You've got to feel for the heat. They have done, they have just been sensational this season. They've got no cattle left. Teray Sadler came back over from New Zealand, got in there, played well, held this game together for about two and a half quarters, then Warnable blew it away. Ended up winning 75 to 48. Sadler's now over in the US. They even tried to get McKendricks back from Boston for this oh, game. Really? Couldn't get her back over. Even though she was on the stat sheet, it wasn't her. Someone I changed else, it. Yes, yeah, someone else was wearing that number. <laughs> Brave, but you think Warnable for here. 
Warnable have just fallen on their feet at the right end of the season. Yeah, very much so. Vanessa Powers is do, trying to do her best to keep the to keep the girls going, but I think losing those three main players in their squad is going to make it really, really hard for them. Kate Sewell, big double-double in this game. Very, very good. Uh, the Green Machine was up there as well. Darcy Saunders played a good game as well. So well done to Warnable. They definitely look like they're going to get through in two. Yeah, uh, I do agree. I think Warnable will go straight. Up to Europe? No. no. What? Up to champ. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I do. Well, I reckon that should go. I hope so. It'd be great to see. Where are we going to this week, mate? I know you've got the phone out ready to go. Who are we going to talk to? Don't, didn't you set this up? No, you set this up. Who are we talking to? You two men. Come on. The Whittlesey, two men, yes. The Whittlesey Pacers. Love the mate, Pacers. There. Love them. And they got up on the weekend. We're going to have a chat with Des Radoslovic, the coach of... Des who? Radoslovic. Oh, right, okay. How do you spell that? Radoslovic. <laughs> All right. Let's go and ask him. Let's go and ask him. Yes, we're here with um, this time Des Radoslovic. We've got him on the phone. Whittlesey Pacers, head coach of the Youth Two Men. Thanks for joining us, Des. No worries, mate. How you going? Yeah, yeah, going pretty well, but uh, probably not as well as you. I lost on the weekend. You didn't. Um, Did you play on the weekend? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you guys are up and about. A um, bit of a big first quarter, but um, you're able to maintain it from there. Tell us about the win, mate. Yeah, look, I mean, we couldn't have got off to a better start. I think we're up 15 nip at the start, and... Uh, getting the high percentage shots and playing hard defence and had a few shots that rattled out and second quarter I suppose they made a bit of a run back when uh, our shots were rattling out and uh, we went a little bit individual but yeah I mean the grand final you take a win anyway you can get it. That's uh, right. yeah, just on the start Des were you surprised because it was 20 to 5 at quarter time were you surprised when the troops came in at quarter time that the margin was so big? Um, I mean, you get to the point, it's, it's, like I said, we're up 15 dip and they're winning 20 to 5. I mean, it was a reward for a lot of hard work, the way we were playing defence. And, I mean, they, they were very unlucky with a few of their shots just rolling out. I think they were 2 of 20 in the first quarter or something yeah. like that. And I just warned my guys that, look, that's a great quarter. You did everything right. But don't expect them to not come back because it's their home court and they're going to come they're going to come running. And they did. And I think they even hit the lead in the second quarter at one stage. So, yeah, it's a good learning curve for the boys too. Mm. Well, Keelor, um notorious for their spread of scorers. How do you, um, well, how do you prepare defensively for a team that you don't really have one particular guy to focus on? Um, look, they, they don't have one particular guy to focus on, which it, it helps to a degree because you don't have to really put too much time into one player. But they are very rigid in their sets. I mean, looking over a few of the tapes from earlier in the year and the way they play off, we know what they do pretty well, and it gives us some, you know, a good chance to prepare. And they stay their structures pretty well, but we can also prepare for that. Um, I mean, it's just, it, it's all about the way the team plays defense properly, and as soon as I've been preaching a lot of guys all year, you play properly, you'll get the result, and that's what we did for probably three of the quarters on the weekend. Now, Des, quite seriously, mate, surely you've, uh, you know, booked a family engagement or something to do with the kids or whatever it may be this Sunday? No, no, I wish. No, no, no. Oh, look, uh, I think a few of the smart Island supporters are going to be bringing brews down there on Saturday night and all those sort of things. But uh, no, we don't want to worry about that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm very confident we can get the win on the Saturday night if we go in and play properly again. But uh, no, no, nothing, uh, no celebrations planned just yet. Well, if you've got nothing to do, Cal has organised a trip to the zoo on Sunday. So if you've no, got, nothing, if you've got no, nothing to do, mate, you can join him. <laughs> oh, no, look, if, uh, if we do happen to get the win, I'm sure we'll have something. But, uh, you yeah, know, don't want to agree into it too much yet. Well, if you win, mate, uh, promotion's on the cards. How do you think you'd go against um, the likes of, you know, uh, Diamond Valley, Altona, Ringwood, people, the teams like that next year? Uh, look, Youth League 1 would be a great challenge. I mean, a, a lot of it comes down to it. You've won all these affords. I mean, if their whole side comes back and, and we end up with the same Youth League group of players, it would definitely be a challenge. We definitely want to go up the division to the Youth League 1. I mean, the way I see it there, the, the top four teams have, have separated themselves from the rest of the league. And I'd like to think that the, the top few teams in Youth League 2 would be competitive with those sides. I mean, Altona were just in Youth League 2 last year and they were, you know, up in the fall for a while. So it shows that it can be done if the team's coached and, uh, and trained properly. So. Oh, I'd, I'd be wrapped in the challenge and all the boys, that's been a big selling point to get the boys to play and train hard just for the, uh, the opportunity to step up and advance their games. So that's definitely been uh, something we've spoken of during the year. Mm. Uh, Des, last one from me, mate. How are you going to tidy this one up and uh, get it all done and dusted on Saturday evening? What's got to happen? Oh, we just have to replicate the, uh, the three of the four quarters that we had on the weekend, I suppose. I mean, if we can, uh, I said going into the game, we'd have to get percent of our free throws I take it and uh, we hit 50 which is an improvement for us which is uh, a relief as a coach. After last week. 
get the game, uh, get the game up the tempo the way that we want it and, uh, and play good hard defense, we should, uh, should come away with it. Uh, as soon as anyone starts talking free throws, Kel's ears just prick up straight away. It's his number one gripe in the whole competition. It's an epidemic across the league, and oh. I'm, not, I'm not exempt, mate. I'll give you the hot tip. Try coaching a team that went 4 of 24 in the fourth quarter and overtime <laughs> in a knockout final. So, yeah. uh, Kel, goes, Kel goes 4 of 24 during warm up, mate. No. It's my time. It's my <laughs> time. I think, I think Kel just needs to step behind the arc and get a high percentage. That's what he uh, with him. Yeah. A dead eye. You get more points anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, thanks for joining us, Des. Really appreciate it. And um, best of luck uh, coming this weekend. Uh, we're both going for the Pacers, by the way. Absolutely. You with the Pacers. Yeah, we both yeah, we're with you. At least that's what we're going to tell you when you're on the phone. And we tipped you to get the we tipped you to get the brooms out as well on Saturday night too. No worries, and I hope in the preview you have to give some of your expert analysis on the youth league too and their players. I hope you've paid a good attention to the box score. And... Yeah, yeah, no, I'll try my best, mate. So what what division are you in again, Des? Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, ask, Des, ask Justin yeah. who his favourite player is apart from Iron Eagles <laughs> and um, Brendan Hughes. Oh, that wouldn't be fair because well, Hughes is my. Name, name me any other player. We, we possibly have. Name one more, Justin. Well, no, you got some good guys down there, but listen, we are running out of time. It's been great <laughs> to have you on the show. We've got plenty to get on with, mate, so best of luck this Saturday. <laughs> no worries. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good show. <laughs> Thanks, mate. See you. <laughs> well, <laughs> Small things and use small minds, and uh, none smaller than mine. Uh, now, uh, great to catch up with Des. Oh, yes. Paces looking all right? No, he loves the chat. Yeah, they'll, yeah they'll, they'll be right over D2 mid, big game, huge game. Well done. Clearly the best team in the competition. Blackburn 74 defeated McKinnon 68 <laughs> ads. And uh, I think Blackburn are just about wrapped all this up now. Well, they're home. I wouldn't go that far. Oh, no, they're home. Oh, they're home. Well and truly. Timmons. Marcus Timmons and the copper, Axel Foley, they scored all 17 points for the Cougars in the first quarter. Did anyone else actually play this game for McKinnon? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they started off well. They were doing work inside. Axel uh, outside as well. No one, no one else scored for the Cougars. I think it was about five minutes into the second quarter. But the thing is, if, something, if something's working, you keep going you don't go, to it. You don't go it away. didn't work. They lost by six points. No, first but if they were scoring minutes. well in the first quarter, you keep going to that. Exactly. Marcus Timmons, 28 and 14. You two are contriving something here. Uh, the copper, Axel Dench, 20 and 9 for the Cougars. Nick George, 18 points yeah. for the Vikings. Very good. David Mock, 13 and 9. Was it the usual stars? No, we did a good job on um, Cromedy, but... Um, we we you like that? We. It's a team game. Yeah, okay. Go on. Come on. Yeah, you were all up there last week, weren't you, Kel? Pat yourself on the back. I'm just, hey, come that's on. why there's three games. So you can look at one, there's We're not two done, mate. Win. We're Since when did you start sticking up for him? Because. Oh, I'll, give you, hot, I'll right. give you the hot tip. I'll give you the hot tip. The Cougars aren't done, mate. All right, we've got a lot of room to improve. As you said, no one else did a lot apart from Axel and Simo. We've got a lot of guys that can step up across the board. And um, we'll be fine when, when it comes to game that's time. That's convincing. Two of 21 from downtown. Uh, McKinnon last week, by the yeah, way. That What's happening up. from the yard? Yeah, it's not getting it done, is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll be right. Am I clearly hated down at McKinnon at the moment? Oh, mate, you got no idea. <laughs> they make comments about you, Jack. Yeah, okay. What about it? It's dirty. It's not dirty. It's got a print on it. Oh, is that a print? Oh, I thought, it was, I, thought it was, I thought it was breakfast. Idiots. No, no, D2, we, got, we got some young guys, though, that can step up and we're getting shots. Well, when are they coming on the court? When are they playing? It's been Michael Chandler, he's my boy. And we've got guys like uh, Jason Tweed, he's gone off to um off to the uh, Europe. He's gone to yep. Europe. So yeah, yeah, he picked a great going. time to go for a trip. Yeah, I don't, know. Right. I don't know. I don't think you, I think you missed that bit. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to win? D two men. The Cougars will win in three. <laughs> Who's going to take win? it on Sunday? Sweet Cal team. Oh come on! We're cutting down the field. You two there. have been talking off camera. Then. On on the two. Blackburn will what finish. Blackburn, Blackburn will finish it in two. What happened to you? Come back to her. You got rid of Kelvin Bowers. Oh, you get rid of him. Did two men Warren? No, no. He's moving on to bigger and better things, and we wish him the best of luck. So all good. So he could have gone anywhere then. Oh, bigger and better things than Warren does. It's all good. Ben will have a new coach next season. Everything's. Good and we wish KB all the very best. He's been fantastic for us the last two years. And you've shunted him. No, we haven't. Don't be stupid. That's, That's controversial. D2 women. Keel or 56 defeated Blackburn 44. 35 to 15 in the middle quarters here. The Thunder at home. Have a guess who stood up for Keel or Carla Maver. Carla. And Cat Black, by the way. Both 11 and 7. Keel or home and host, surely. Mm. Yeah, very much so. I think actually Keel or might be pushed to that third game. I think Black. I think Blackburn's really? experience might actually get one game, so they'll be pushed to three, but they will finish it off. But Nathan didn't do anything. 
Beck Nathan was well held, two of eight for the game. Really, really well held. Uh, Keelor's depth was fantastic. Lauren Hall, by the way, should be set for the Vikings 16 and 15. She Monster. certainly did her bit. Yeah, definitely did her bit. You really think this will be pushed to three? Yeah, I, I honestly do. I think Blackburn will be too, too good in game two. Beck Nathan will fire some threes, it'll be fine. But uh, game three will be all Keelor's. I think Keelor might finish this one off on Saturday night. Go yeah, odd tips. Yeah, crazy tips. Hey, listen, it wasn't good scoring. It wasn't good shooting, I should say, in this game. Keelor shot at 22%, Blackburn at 24%. Both teams some work to do there. The nerves of the finals have got to them. Fair yeah. Hills rings, mate. So, yeah, well, yeah, we've talked about that. Uh, who's going to win? Uh, Keelor sweeps. Finish? Sweepers. Yeah, okay, fair enough. A state youth champ, one men. Ringwood home by two over oh. Melbourne. 63-61. Great, great game. No one really got a hold of this game, by the way. Zoma had 13 and 13. Uh, Muka Silva, 16 and 11. No one, no one really stood up and got 20 plus, 25 plus. It was just an even contribution from both teams. Just a cracking game. Yeah, well, I think so. I think they're both um, very talented teams, arguably the best two. Yep. Um, ended up there. But I think Ringwood, the, the wiring thing for Melbourne is Ringwood's big gun didn't do a whole lot. Yep. Snowball was limited. Uh, Zoma's 13 and 13 was below par. Yep. Um, good to got see Brenton Charles, a young Ringwood points. guy. Four trays, very good. He's been playing champ. He's been playing champ on the bench for about eight years. Yep. Um, and Sean Clark, he didn't do a lot, and they still managed to pull out the win. Michael, Brandon Charles. Michael Stella, Stella didn't play this game. Was there a reason for that? Um, I'm not actually sure. Of seeing I haven't been, at, I haven't know. been at training this week, so I wouldn't actually know what's Becca, going on. you weren't training. This. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. got bad out semi finals. Yeah. Hey, foul shooting for Ringwood, very, very poor. Not sure what the young blokes are doing down there. Eight of twenty-two. They shot at thirty-six percent. I know it's your bug, repeating mate. yourself. I know it's your bug. Okay, all right. Don't repeat yourself. We'd hate to hear that. State youth champ two men. We'll see sixty-three. Whittlesey 63 defeated Keelor 56, a 20 to 5 first quarter for the Pacers. Game yeah. over. Oh, well, it wasn't because if you Come actually on. had a deeper Came look on. at it, Keelor jumped back and got within single digits. Come you on, and looked at that. Game over. Game they over. They jumped back, got within a half, but um, Whittlesey were able to grind it out. Who won the game? Seven. Whittlesey, I just right, said. Okay. Daniel Ainidi's 15 points, didn't miss a shot. Yep. And Thunder only shot at 27%, by the way. That's pies. Very, very, very. You're not going to win any games doing that. Very, very lucky. Whittlesey get this one in two. Back on, yes, yeah. Whittlesey in two. Whittlesey. Are you sure? Oh, I'm 100% sure. Who do you sure. think will stand up for Whittlesey this week, Ed? Um, what do you think? What do you think? Well, I thought Daniel Lyonides was very good. Oh, because he's on the sheet. <laughs> Who else? Give me one. Say, give me just give me one. Hughes, Hughes is a very good player. Brendan Hughes, you can't knock him. Oh, he's a great player. He's great, yeah, because he plays <laughs> Div 1 as well, that's what you know. <laughs> Take your champ women. Speaking of crackers, I'll tell you what, this was a beauty. We watched this one unfold. I'll just stop you there. The great thing about this, Sweet Cal was actually at a uh, women's game. Oh, he got here really for the men's game. Oh, he, wanted he wanted to seat the stands. He got here really. No, 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 I give him credit for that. He actually came to a Holy men's game. Holy that was a fantastic game of basketball. I was here. You came at halftime. You half came time. and spoke to me. I was here. You were here at halftime. Yeah, I got here at halftime. You were talking to Trigger over there yeah. for the whole game. I you weren't even watching. I saw you. Melbourne had a chance You're to like, win this game. game. They missed two shots in the last three seconds. True or false? True. Well, I must have been watching something then. Well done yeah, to Wadley. It's on live snaps. <laughs> <It's online laughs> snaps. Well done to Wadley. They got up. Look, great game, Ed. Tell us all about it. Yeah, very much so. Uh, big <laughs> game for Bianca Babbitt. She had uh, 19 and 7. Yeah. And uh, Izzy B had uh, 15 points for the Tigers. Yeah. Well, also, I can't say Linda's last name. Riskala. Riskala. We'll go with that. Yeah. Riskala. 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 Yeah, that's good. Cool. Linda R. Linda R. Linda, Linda, right? Linda R. This girl finished with 11 points. Yeah. But let's talk about how she got her points. Oh. She had a three-quarter court buzzer beater. Yes, first quarter. That looked like it was never ever going to be. When was it? End oh. of. Well, you know you were first here. First quarter. Yeah. Nothing but bottom of the cup. Then she had a, a put back up this end, which was just like a tap, which and it end? went in. Which end? This end. Oh, this end. Yeah. Right, yeah. Down the other end, she had a, I think it was a reverse layup yeah. that went so high, it didn't look like it was going to hit bounce, the ring. Bounce, 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 Straight yeah. in the right on it. Yeah, 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 that was good. Three of the most freakiest shots ever, yeah. but you pull them out in the grand final. You've wrapped that up well. You have wrapped that up well. What's going to happen in uh, the next two games? Maybe one game this weekend. I reckon this game's also going to go to three. I reckon Melbourne will win the second, and the third game will go to overtime. Which and will win? win. Come on, Dude. who will win? Total fence sitter on this uh, game. No, this is the last show of the season, Ed. If you, we're going we're gonna to absolutely ring you through this <laughs> ring in a minute. You can't sit on the fence, mate. Who is going to win? Waverly. Waverly. Waverly in three. 
Yeah, Waverley in three. I'll go Waverley yeah. in two. Oh, no. Nah. Waverley to get up Saturday night. Now, before we no get way. out of here, a big thanks to everyone for the season. Oh. We are idiots. We know we're idiots. We enjoy it. As we always say, <laughs> as we always say, if we haven't offended you or disappointed you yet, just take a number. We'll get to you. Mm. We're trying our hardest to get round to everyone. Thanks for a great season. Big V's been huge. Enjoy the last week. Don't forget the presentation night. Yes, 10th of September the 10th. Get your tickets now. Give the Big V office a call. Drive Cal up the, up the wall. He enjoys that. Your biggest, greatest, most spectacular memory from season 2K11? Um, I think as a player, when I dropped 15 in Mornington uh, to carry the team to a victory. Um, but, but as a general supporter big, uh, of Big V, Last night or yesterday yeah. afternoon was absolutely it was good. unbelievable. Huge. Yeah. What about, yours, what about yours? Um as a player, yeah. I would probably say uh, hitting the hitting the three from the corner at Ringwood to go over time. But Come on. um yeah, that would probably be my season. Oh, what about something else? Give us something. No, that's all I got. Oh, God as sake. a player, Justin, scoring two on a Sunday night <laughs> on the over 35s. <laughs> over 35s, that's a bit young. I just thought that's been played. Uh, no, look, my greatest memory of this, there's been He's lots. with us. No, there, look, there's been lots. There's been a lot of huge memories, both on the court and off the court. But I've got to tell you, Big V, uh, the big V, big bounce, something different. It was different yeah, and it cool. was exciting, you know, and I think the players loved it. And any time you can produce something that the players love, you're on the right path. You're on a good thing. Yeah, you're on a good thing. Yeah. Have a great off-season. Good luck in the uh, coaching and players' merry-go-round. A final message for our viewers, Cal. Go. Cool. On the spot. Go. Give them something. No, I'll just say thank, thanks for the season. It's been great to all the players. <laughs> yeah, no, we do. For all the players out there, um, go work. If, you didn't, if you didn't win a grand final this season, that's all. Bad luck. Bad luck, but work hard on your game and um, hopefully uh, you better luck next year. Hey, well, have we signed a contract for next year, by the way? I don't think we have. I don't think it's been renewed. <laughs> Has the big bee even spoken to us about next season? Hey, well, somebody knocked, we currently got knocked off last year, Ooh, so who's one of next? Us will go. One of us will go. Do, do, Who's do, it going to be? See you next year. Thanks for the memories.